Oldie but a goodie, we'll sing all three stanzas to He Set Me Free. Once like a bird in prison I dwelled No freedom from my sorrow I felt But Jesus came and listened to me And glory to God He set me free He set me free, yes He set me free And He broke the bonds of prison for me I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see for glory to God. He set me free. Now I am climbing higher each day. Darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground. And glory to God, I'm homeward bound. He set me free, yes, he set me free, and he broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see for glory to God. He set me free. Goodbye to sin and things that confound Not of the world shall turn me around Daily I'm working, I'm praying to And glory to God I'm going through He set me free, yes, He set me free And He broke the bonds of prison for me I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see for glory to God. He set me free. Good morning again. It's good to see each of you at the Lord's house. Glad you made the decision to come and join us and be with us this morning for service and to worship the Lord. If you're a guest here today, in, in the pew in front of you, you should find one of these cards. If you would, fill out just as much as you feel comfortable. And on your way out the doors, if you'll go out this left-hand side and stop by the West welcome desk, we've got a gift we would like to share with you. And then also, if you're here and you're home, folk, and maybe you've got a prayer need or an update on your contact information, also just drop that in the offering plate on your way out. And we'll uh, try to help to correct those needs as well. If, you, if you're here and you're ready to worship the Lord this morning, say amen. Amen. Good. It sounded like it was kind of weak in the singing department. We're going to sing another one here in a minute. I want everybody to, to pipe it up a notch. Choir's a little low in number. People's out serving. We've got a lot of stuff going on today. We'll talk about that uh, a little later, and we're looking forward to that. But let's, let's praise and worship the Lord. Before we do that, let's go, Lord, in prayer. Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you've given us. Thank you for the opportunity we have to gather. We realize that we're a, a blessed and a privileged people, that we live in a land where we have the freedom to gather and to worship you. And, and then we're even more blessed because you've made a way for us to do that, O oh God, through your Son, Jesus Christ. As we try to just lift you up and honor you today, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit might move amongst us, that you might draw us into you, and that we might be obedient to that. Lord, we pray that you just might bless, that you might direct and have your hand upon everything that we might do in this place today. We ask this and we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. If you will be going on ahead and turning with me into the book of Numbers. Book of Numbers is where we're going to be taking our scripture from in chapter 13. And, and this morning we're going to continue in our series that we're looking at this month at, at looking at enemies of the faith. And, and in talking about that and doing that, as I prepared this uh, kind of my, my calendar for the year back months and months ago, uh, I had no idea what our Sunday school lesson would be on or anything else, and it, it goes right along with uh, the message this morning, because today the, the enemy of faith that we're talking about is fear. A and fear might not be something that we think about a lot, but probably something that affects us more 
than we ever know. And, and you know, in life, there's a lot of people that have fears, fears of different things, fears of the dark, afraid of the dark, afraid of, uh, of snakes or spiders. Uh, some people are afraid of, of water and getting in it. I don't have all those fears. None of those things really bother me. The one thing that throughout my life has always kind of been a struggle with, with me is I have a fear of heights. I can handle uh, up to a certain level, and then it starts to bother me. Being in an airplane, something like that doesn't bother me. I, I have to fly around a lot, and none of that bothers me. But being on the edge or of a precipice or on a ledge or anything like that is concerning. And I guess it's really not the fear of heights that bother me. It's the fear of falling. And that sudden landing that, that really concerns me. Um, but, you know, a lot of times that, that might, our fears cause us to miss out on things. I can remember the boys being young, and we went uh, over uh, to East Tennessee, and we went to Rock City. And, and, and while we were there going around Rock City, it was their first time to be able to see all that. I had done it as a child, and we decided to do it. The boys and Julie go over to the ledge, and they're looking off. And I'm standing back on the other side. I, I feel sick at my stomach just watching them. And I'm just thinking, oh, my goodness, y'all, just please, please come back. It, 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 allowed, it caused me to miss out on the opportunity of being able to go out there and see exactly what they saw, even though it didn't concern me a whole lot. It, I didn't get to fully experience that with my family because I allowed that fear to bother me. And, and today in this scripture that we're going to look at, we see how fear can affect us and how it can buckle us. If you go back, and, and you don't have to uh, turn back there if you don't want to. It's still in the same chapter. It, it, the story, we're, to kind of set the stage of where we're at and understanding in the Scripture, the Lord gives Moses <clears throat> some instruction. He tells Moses to, to go out and do this. He, in verse 17 it says, Then Moses sent them... The, the twelve spies, to spy out the land of Canaan, and said to them, Go up this way into the south, and go up to the mountains, and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not. Be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So the Lord instructs Moses to go send out the spies, and that's what he does. He gives them kind of marching orders to go and to view out this land. And this isn't just any land. He's sending them to go and get an oversight of what they're going to encounter when they go to possess the promised land. This is the land that God had promised Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. These people had been hearing about it. They have learned about it generations and generations waiting to inhabit, waiting to inherit this great land that God has promised them. And, and now the time is finally at hand. The time has finally come where they can go and do this great thing. They can finally receive this blessing that God has been promising them and had a waiting for them. And Moses sends out this preparation. And, and, and they go and they do that. And today we're going to pick up in the scripture here in, in verse 26. And we're going to look at this thought of fear versus faith. What happens when fear gets in the way of our faith? Fear is, is another one of those enemies of it. So we're going to start looking at, at verse 26 and let's see what takes place when the spies come back. 26 through 29, read this. It says, now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh. And they brought back word to them and to the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. 
And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea along the banks of the Jordan. So, so here in this scripture, we see that they go out and they do as they are told, and when they come back, they come to give a report. And there's 12 spies that's coming back to, to tell their information. And, and, and here that we see the very first point that we want to make. The very first thing that we see is fear's concern. Fear's concern. Here it, it starts, when, when they start to tell them the news, it starts with positive things. It starts all sounding great, but it ends with the negative. It, they, they say the land, if you look there, it says that it truly flows with milk and honey, that it's a rich and it's a prosperous land. And they bring back the fruit and the fruit's good. Everything is going well. It looks just like God had promised, just like God wanted to give them. It's all there waiting in their grasp. But you know what happens? Fear says some things to us. It says we can't. Oh, we can't do that. Fear tells us, stop, don't, don't go any further. And if you look there in verses 29 and, and, thir- and 28 and 29, it, it gives us specific reasoning. That's the polite way of saying it that they gave. Let's, let's be real. What they do, they came up with a list of excuses of why not to. And, and that's what fear wants to do to us. gives us excuses of why not to do something. It says we can't do this. It stops us in our tracks. If you look, it says, well, the people, they're strong. They're, they're big and they're strong people. The cities are, are fortified. They're large and they've got fortresses around them. They've got walls ultimately preventing us from taking them. If you even notice there, it doesn't explain it here, but later in the scripture you'll see this repeated and it actually gives explanation it says that there's giants there. The descendants of, of Anak, that's what it's talking about. They were, they were large people. They were looked at and viewed as giants. And then it goes to enlist all these different nations. Ultimately, it says the enemy's everywhere. The enemy is everywhere. When, when we, today, look at our situation and look at our culture and look at everything that's around us, when we realize what God's told us to do as believers, when we just uh, when we evaluate the Great Commission, Jesus' command to us in its most simplest form, go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He, he tells us that command that we're supposed to do. We, we hear it. We know it. We know what's before us. We know the task that is at hand. But how often is it that we come up with our excuses? We, we may try to reason it out. and We may try to sound smart. We may try to say, well, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. All those people, they don't want to listen to me. We can come up with all the reasons in the world. But in reality... What happens is we allow fear to control us and to dictate us. And and in doing so, it can cause us to miss out on the blessing that's before us. See, we see fear is concerned, but the very next thing that we see in this passage is face conviction. Look at what verse 30 says. Then Caleb, Caleb one one of the 12. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses, and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. See, we see here, fear has, has, has brought concern upon 10 of the 12, as we find out later, but there's these two men, Two men, one of which at the time is Caleb. He's, he's the older one of the two that, that stands up, and he stands up, and he has boldness. He has boldness to share. He, he steps up, and he tells them, hold on. He says, everybody hush. Everybody just hush for a minute. Faith will cause us to step up. You know, at 1 Timothy, Paul writes to Timothy in in 1 Timothy chapter 1. He says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 
Today, if we're truly living by faith, God, it, God doesn't bring fear upon us. Anytime fear comes and it wants to hinder our faith, it's because the enemy's at work. It's because Satan is out there throwing those fiery darts. And what's the scripture tell us? As Paul tells us about those, those pieces of armor, the armor of God, he tells us to take up that shield of faith so that it can what? It can quench those. When it says quench, it means put out those fiery darts. It, it absorbs them. That's what our faith wants to do. That's what God wants to do through us. He says he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and catch the last one and a sound mind. He's given us the ability. He's given us the desire. And then he's given us the ability to be able to reason it out for the right purposes. That's what he wants to do. Here we see faith causes us to step up. Faith causes us to trust in what's unseen, in the unseen. Here, when, when Caleb speaks, he said, let us go up at once and take possession the people are stronger. They're way more numerous in number. Their cities are fortified. There's giants even there. There's all kinds of things saying, no, we can't do this. But he says, yes, we can. It's what's in the unseen. It's also what's in the unwritten. Why? Because he's not trusting in his own power. He's, he's trusting in the power of God. And back over in the, in the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah says this, it says, well, the Lord speaks these words and he shares them with the people. He says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. That's the promise the Lord gives Isaiah to give to the people. He says, I'm here with you. You're not alone. Caleb understood this. He knew this. Why? He was, he, faith calls us to trust in that that we can't see. Faith says, with God, I can. He says, we're going to take it. We're going to possess it. And he goes on and says, for we are well able to overcome it. He says, we've got it. The victory is awaiting us. John, the apostle, writes. He, he says, there is no fear in love. For perfect love cast out fear. It says, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. If we've experienced the love of God and we want to show the love of God, the fear of the things of this world, the fear of man, the fear of even Satan himself should be cast from us. That, that, that doesn't have power over us. It says, perfect love cast out that fear. But if we're still living in fear, love hasn't perfected itself in us. We, we need to grow in our faith. We, we see that it's truly in this life, it, it's oftentimes a battle of fear versus faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says what? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. That, that's what faith is. Faith is, is, is meaning we don't have to see it to believe it, but we're putting our trust in it. it, it it's, it's trusting that our parents will take care of us, that they'll do what they want, that we, we need for us when we're a little child. We don't have to see it all the time. We trust that they're going to feed us. They're going to put a shelter over us. They're going to do all these things. We don't have to, we don't have to worry about it. We, they trust that their, that their parents are going to pick them up from school. We, we, we put that trust in other people. But do we put that same trust in God? Most of us are going to trust that our employer is going to give us a check at the end of a work week. Or maybe if you draw Social Security that the government's going to send you a check once a month. We trust those things are going to happen. But do we trust the God that created us, that sacrificed himself for us, that he can truly do things beyond measure? 
that, that he can fulfill the promises he gave us. And see, here he gave them this promise, this promise that they've been waiting for, they've been longing for. These are the same people that had seen the pillar of of fire by night and cloud by day. They had been eating on the manna that God had provided. They had experienced all this. And, and, and I look sometimes and I think about all that and I think, how can these people lose faith? How can they do that? And then I think of myself. And I think of myself. And I think of us. And I think we're the people that not only heard all the stories, we've experienced the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. Why, why do we sometimes, why do I sometimes struggle, struggle to completely trust him, to take whatever step of faith that he wants for me next? Faith brings forth conviction. We, seen that, we see that shown here in, in this man, Caleb, as it lived out in us. The very final thing we want to see is, is fear's counsel. Fierce counsel, what, what wisdom tries to tell us of this world that fear looks to. Look at verses 31 down through 33. It goes on and it says, But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they're stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel, a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so were we in their sight. Fear will cause us to take the, the counsel of the world and the wisdom of the world a lot of times in the picture. And, and that's what happens here. Look, look at the, the reasons they give. It's, it's similar to before, right? It, it doesn't change much from the, the excuses they make. But, but here's the key. Catch this. The, the real reason Catch this. Everybody listening? That the people don't do it? The real reason the people don't get received the blessing of God is because of the testimony of God's people. Think You let that sink in for a minute. Let that sink in. The, the testimony of God's own people the children of Israel, these, these 12 men who were chosen out, one of each tribe, to go out and to investigate. That's what stops them from receiving the promise of God. You know, fear causes us to settle. It causes us to settle for mediocrity over ministry. It causes us to settle with security over serving. It causes us to settle with doubt over deliverance. It causes us to settle with the curse instead of the cure. It causes us to settle with sin instead of salvation. The Apostle Paul, one of his most powerful phrases that he shares in the letter to the Romans, as he writes that in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. He says, I'm unashamed. What we need today is we need the testimony of God's people to be a testimony that's unashamed. And let me tell you today, here's the truth. There's going to be people dying and going to hell. They're not going to receive the promise that God has provided for us because of the testimony or the lack of testimony of God's people. That's us. There's people out in the world that need to hear the sharing of the gospel of Christ. They're relying on you to do it. 
and you call yourselves a Christian, and they look to you, and they say there's supposed to be something different. There's supposed to be something special about them. But you know what happens? We let faith take hold. We let the enemy come against us, and we let him give us all the excuses of the why nots. And then at the end, then at the end, people come up to people like me and say, well, do you think they could have made it to heaven? Let me just be real honest with you. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Don't come for me to comfort you for something you didn't do. Don't allow faith or fear to overcome your faith. The testimony of God's people is what he expects of us. He, he used the example here in the Old Testament, and he goes on and he tells us. That Great Commission tells us. That's, who does he say? Does he say just for the preachers to do it, just for the apostles to do it, just for the deacons? To, no. He, he speaks to all his followers. And he says that's what we're supposed to be about, making disciples. And disciples don't just spring up on their own. We have to make it. We have to do it. It tells us that we have to, to be about it. Faith, or excuse me, fear, causes us to please ourselves over pleasing God. Fear causes us to miss out on the blessings and the promises of God. Do you... Settle with where you are instead of embracing what God has awaiting you. See, these, these people, it tells us that, that this isn't the end of the story. These people, as we go into the very next chapter, they start going to Moses saying, Oh, we've heard the reports. We can't do it. We, we can't go over and possess it. There's too much. It's too much. It's too hard. And finally, the Lord, the, the Lord hears, and the Lord talks to Moses, and the Lord's not happy. He's ready to wipe them out. He's ready to be done. And Moses pleads to God on the people's behalf that he wouldn't do that. But, but listen, choosing fear over faith comes with consequences. On down in verse 35 of the next chapter, it says, I, the Lord, have spoken this. I will surely do so to, to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me. In the wilderness, they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. Fear took hold over them, and it came with consequences. Because of those consequences, they were unable to go and inherit what God had promised them. Listen to me today. There's going to be people today, that here, here in a few moments, if you're not already, weighing a decision. Am I going to allow fear to have control of me? Am I going to allow fear to have victory another day, another week, another, another point in time? In my life, they would spend 40 years in the desert only to die at the dead end that their fear had created. Today, we can, we can do that. You've got that choice. You can die at the dead end your fear creates. Or, or you can do like Caleb and Joshua. See, it doesn't just end there. It tells us that out of all those people, all those people that were old enough basically to make a decision for themselves, all those adults, only two, only two entered the promised land. Those are, it's Caleb and Joshua, the two spies that took a stand. It tells us on over, several books later, after this desert wandering that they, they experience and all the stuff that comes with it, in, in, in the book of Joshua, it says, Then the priest who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord st stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. And all Israel crossed over on dry ground until all 
the people had completely crossed over the Jordan. You know what? God still, for those that were faithful, you, you might be surrounded in a, in a world, in a community, you, even in your house. You might not be surrounded with people who, who have the faith that God wants you to have. We can still make the choice to trust in him. To, to, like that song talked about. Even when things don't happen the way we want it to. Even when the mountains aren't moved. Even when we don't see the waters parting in front of us. Caleb and Joshua had to stick it out those 40 years. They had to suffer in the consequences of the others. They had to live in, let's just put it this way. They had to live in a culture where God wasn't a priority. Sometimes we feel like that. But they carried on with faith, and one day they were rewarded. Hebrews, they're, they're in chapter 11, that, that chapter of faith. It goes on down there in, in verse 6, and it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him, to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder, of them that seek him diligently. It says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without putting our complete trust in faith, is not a one-time belief. It's a lifelong trust. It says without faith, faith, it's impossible to please him. But it says that he's a rewarder of those that believe that he is. When it's talking about that he is, that he is God that he is the master, that he is the Lord, and that he is a rewarder of those that seek him diligently. Just like we talked about in Sunday school this morning, we're not talking about an emotional decision, an emotional reaction to a spiritual event. We're talking about a lifelong commitment. Those that are diligent in their faith. Do you need to make that step today? Do you need to allow fear to no longer have hold or control over you and truly trust in him today? And you may think, well, he's talking to the lost, and it may be so, but the Lord's also speaking to us Christians. Because listen to me today, your testimony, you sharing your faith with a world of lost people that need it might be what's holding somebody's eternity in the balance. It might be somebody in your house. It might be somebody in a cubicle or on the equipment next to you. It might be somebody in your social group, your, your, your group of people that you talk with. It might be some random person that doesn't even know you. They just might hear you sharing your faith as they're walking by, and that lights a spark within them. Are you allowing fear to control you? Or are you allowing the faith of God to control you today? As we rise to our feet, as they lead us in this song of invitation, today would you be obedient? If the Holy Spirit's speaking to you today and saying you need to respond, you need to come, would you do that as we sing?